Thanks for coming, uh, and it's really great. This is, Roger said, Arthur said, my fifth show here, so it really feels like coming home, and every year the gallery gets more beautiful and bigger and beautiful, and uh, so it's great to be back here. I very, feel very privileged to have Arthur represent my work here. Um, and, you know, I never say artwork, because when people say to me, I'm an artist, I silently always think, ha, I think I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> or, or better yet, history will be the judge of that. So um, I, I will call this my work, and you can decide if it's art or not. But uh, uh, I'm a writer, and, and every career I have involves writing. And this is just a different way I can tell you stories. I can be, uh, I can be a priest here. I can be my parents. I can be a florist. I can be a cult leader. I can be a fan. I can be a crazy person. But each one of these is pretty much thought up before I do it. And, and Mike Kelly and I had a debate, which is the most hated word in art. And, and I said decorative, and he said conceptual. But um, I... <laughs> I, I actually think mine is conceptual art because I do think it all up and I write it beforehand. Sometimes it turns into something else once I do the pictures and obviously the, it's, I use photography, it's not about the photography, I'm hardly Ansel Adams here. But, um, and many of the things are taken right off the TV screen. Um, so, welcome to Catholic Sin, basically. And uh, this one, is decorative, is really... Uh, came from that discussion with Mike Kelly, and, um, it, and it's really to keep decorators away that come to your house and say, you should buy that artwork because it matches the couch, which is the ultimate sin, really, that some decorators do do. Never match your art to your, to your furniture. So I, I did it in the same way as combat because um, I, I think it's really architecturally very, very beautiful piece, and I don't think it's ever, the combat design has ever been appreciated so much. So um, I, I try to put that together and also to warn off people about, about this one fate uh, having. I've never seen a real roach crawl in there, but uh, but um, or a decorator, so it's still it's, <laughs> it, it, it could happen. Um, I try to uh, on, on the different work. This piece is something. I, this is where I can say I can be a, a reporter because I read about in Japan maybe. 10, 15 years ago, and they've never been able to figure out this phenomena. On a children's TV show that was broadcast routinely all over Japan, one morning in something like 5,000 different homes, Japanese children had seizures watching it on this particular scene, and no one's been able to figure it out. And this isn't the kid, I found the kid, but these three things are what caused the seizures, and nobody could ever figure it out. So I keep looking at it wanting to have a seizure, but it's never happened. So, there's some young people here. Do you feel weird looking at that? <laughs> See? Uh, nobody can explain. She does. <laughs> See? She said yes. Yeah, so if you have bad kids, you can keep it in your house and say, all right, you're going to have to go look at that if you don't perk up. This is real, except for a few real things that fans, when you do a signing, people, they, they ask you, the security asks them to write it on a post-it and hand it to you so you can spell their name rights and stuff. So some of these are kind of scary, you know, people, but, and I've gotten fan letters of people that have sent me pictures of them in their underpants sitting on a cot surrounded by handguns with a note <laughs> saying, what do I have to do to get you to notice me? And at first I was a little like, a little put off and then realized it was a joke, you know, so I, but these are all real ones. And, and so you never know, like right now, there could be a crazy person in this audience. You never know. And I'm always a little worried about that. Um, this is where you can just take one thing and change the word. It really was saying Lizzie, and I changed it to Leslie. Um, you know, you have to know your audience. I think that's important too. <laughs> this one is rear projection. Um, rear projection is, um, uh, I love, and Alfred Hitchcock always did it really badly, almost so that I think it was a style choice. It's when the actors are really in the studio filming, but the background, like the water, is a, is a movie behind them. They almost don't do it anymore because you don't need to, but I love watching it, so I tried to take real rear projection and put it in so we have asses and everything. So on rear projection, even the end in a way is a rear projection. So I'm trying to celebrate different things in the movie business, the, the business of films, but, but to turn it into a different way. I'm scared of all animals try to bite me, even Arthur's mite. Um, you know, I, and so I, this is, to me, all dogs look like this. And I, <laughs> I, and I'm not, I don't dislike animals. I think PETA makes a mistake. They should say fur makes you look old. That should be their ad campaign. <laughs> it would work much better. But I keep thinking there's a microphone, it's not. Um, so, uh, you know, that's just my fear of dogs, really. Um, 
This one I think would be good for somebody maybe. It's either if you are an alcoholic to remember that really it's just liquor is dynamite. You know, it also is a nice thing to put over your bar in your house if you're just celebrating liquor. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I think it's something that shows the difference of how liquor can be such a completely different thing for each people. And I've had, done a lot of different pieces um, with this question about liquor. This one is just what it looks like after I've finished a script and it's done. It's what's left. I write all my scripts on legal pads with pen and pencil. So when you're really done and the movie's about ready to start, this is encouragement for any writer, I think. It's when you've finished, when your book is done, when your script is done. Um, this one is um, Pig Latin, and this is, I love subtitles. I have no problem with subtitles. Uh, but some audiences today I hear say, oh, well, I'm not seeing that. It has subtitles, which is, shocks me. I even like white subtitles in snow movies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but what I did was my mother taught me Pig Latin when I was a child, so, um, so I, I put subtitles on all the most famous movies, the famous lines, and did them in Pig Latin, like uh, Osebud Ray is Rosebud, you know, the famous line. So, and, and I curated a big show recently at the Walker Center, and I did the acoustic guide in Pig Latin, the whole thing. They let me do it, which was great. So, <laughs> so um, I, you know, to comment on the impenetrability of art writing, which I love impenetrable art writing, the kind that infuriates people when you read it, like, oh, my God, I love that kind of writing. So this one is one of my favorites, Hetero Flower Shop. Um, you know, it's a guess being sexist, but can heterosexual men really be florists? I don't know, you know? And, and I had a friend that I heard her on the phone saying, she called a friend, she said, you got any gay people working there? And they said, yeah, there's a couple in the back. She said, let me speak to them. Because she said, I was just not going to have a hetero guy do my flowers. So, <laughs> so we went around and got real heterosexual florists to do this. And, <laughs> and but these are what people like. When you call like just those, these are ads you see in like Parade Magazine, but these are, we made these. This one, some people get angry about, it's called Hollywood Smile Train. Um, but really, the Smile Train kids are stars in that world. In charity work, they're on every billboard. Are they real even? I don't know, you know? I mean, I've never seen them in person, have you? I mean, have you ever seen them talking or anything? So um, the, they're on billboards everywhere in the world. So I just thought in their world of charity and fundraising, they are superstars. They should have Wrestle Jerry's kids for charity. You know, I'm trying to think what they could do. So, so I wanted to celebrate them but if real movie stars went to be Smile Train. So I'm putting two things together. I'm not making fun of these kids. I'm just talking about how, how really they are celebrities in their world. Over here, Catholic Sin. This is what I went to Catholic uh, Sunday school because my parents didn't send me to Catholic school because my father was, wasn't Catholic and my mother was. And they were really mean to you there because they knew that your parents didn't send you to Catholic school. So they were so hateful. Really, they would be arrested today. But, uh, so they showed us this all the time, and this was your soul. And this was if you, I guess, never did one thing, just stayed in the house and prayed all day. You had no sins. Then little sins were venial sins, and one black one. And if you had this, you went to hell. So this was, they showed us this every week. Every time I still look at a milk bottle, I think of it. So, um, all right, over here, this is, um, my parents really did this portrait of me. And I added the mustache, which is, certainly has an art history of adding mustaches to things, to Champ, and everybody did it. And I didn't ruin the real one, though. I, I didn't take the real, the real portrait. Uh, so I remember when I posed for this picture, and I knew I was insane then, even as a child. I can remember <laughs> sitting there and knowing I was insane, but liking the idea of an artist and being there. And, and so um, all I did was upgrade it a little, because the person that I am today was in me there when I was that young. And that's just what I'm trying to show, that if you have any kids and, and they have fantasy play, let them do it. You know, encourage your kids to be nuts in a way, because that's a fantasy life as your kid. And, and my parents did, which, even though they were horrified. So um, that's, <laughs> that's important to do, even if you're horrified. Okay, here we have ham. And oddly enough, most of the people that bought this were Jewish. And I... <laughs> I never thought of that. That wasn't, you know, I guess it's a forbidden thing to have or something, but um, I meant it as an actor. The worst thing you can say about an actor is a ham. So I always thought if an actor had this hanging in their apartment, they would really be brave. Or the best would be if it was in a casting office while you were waiting to go in. <laughs> This one really is a New Orleans tale. This was the Process Church, which was um, 
originally they, they worshiped Satan and Jesus. And in the Ed Sanders book, The Family, there is a chapter about how Manson stole the idea of their fear and everything and used it in their brainwashing cycles. And uh, the Process Church sued, and that chapter is no longer in the, the book, The Family, except the first edition. Um, it, and they sued in London and lost the case. So it, it is in the, in the London version of the book. The Process Church was here in, on Ursuline Street. I went by the other day, it's condos. I wonder if the people know that are living there. Uh, the, actually, I'll give you the address. Uh, <laughs> Hold on here. Well, I'll come back to that. And uh, this was the head of it. And, um, and he actually was the only pussy-whipped cult leader because his wife really ran it, but he was good looking. And, and, and he's still alive and lives uh, in Staten Island and is a complete recluse. No one has, he has given no public statement that I know of for 30 years. Um, the kids in New Orleans, when they had it, they all wore black cloaks. It was really goth before its time, and they begged and everything. And I went in, and I thought, well, I, they couldn't get me a cloak. Everybody looks stupid in a cloak, especially in this weather, you know. So uh, it was the wrong place to do it. But, uh, but I always remembered, and you'd be surprised how few people in this town ever remember the process. And it was there for years, and they were always in Jackson Square giving out, you know, like Moonies giving out stuff. So this is just... And, and recently a big book came out called Love, Sex, Death, and the Process, which was a big history of the book, and they put out this ring, which I've never worn except today. I got it. It's the process ring. So I figured I would show it to you for the whole experience of this very creepy guy and, and in, a, in a cult that was almost hilarious because I figured, well, if you're, if you're worshiping Jesus and the devil, you're like, you can't lose, really. <laughs> it's like being bisexual, as Woody Allen said. You get double your chance for a date. I I mean, it's, it's the same thing here. So, um, so that is Catholic sin. I think, I think that we are, um, we are celebrating sin and Catholicism and obsession in a way that hopefully can be joyous to you all. And thank you all very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you.